It's not going well over at CNN. <laughs> you're, you're shocked. I know. I'm dripping with Schadenfreude well. over here, but yeah. <laughs> um, the the cursed morning show over there, which is just failure after failure, has failed again. And now the CNN This Morning Show with Poppy Harlow and Phil Mattingly is going away. Now CNN is in talks with those anchors about new roles. That's there's, it's not happening. If you don't get an anchor job right out of being fired from your anchor job, you no longer have an anchor job. Um, then they're doing CNN News Central, which is going to go to seven from 7 to 10 a.m. with John Berman, Kate Bulldon, and Sarah Sidner. Now, John Berman was already in the morning position, and it didn't work out. Like, this is what they—it's just the rearranging of the deck chairs. That's their only plan, except for this one thing which is guess who's getting his own show on the weekdays now, no longer marooned on the weekends. Jim Acosta, baby. He's moving to the 10 a.m. and being rewarded. I mean, really, that's a reward for his rabid anti-Trump coverage and getting Russiagate completely, all of it. So that's, this is how Rachel Maddow gets a $30 million a year for one show a week. You just keep lying about Trump and you keep moving up the ladder. Yeah, look, I, I was at CNN uh, in 20, uh, 2014 and 2015 into 2016 um, as a, this is when they used to actually have conservatives on the payroll. I was there, yeah. Kaylee McEnany was there. I mean, there were a few of yeah. us. And in the Trump era, to give everyone a sense, that just became unacceptable. I mean, it was no longer, they're, they're a network that got so ideologically um, uh, crazed that they were having to have people on that were fakes for the other side, meaning people that actually can't represent the Republican pro-Trump point of view. Instead, it was re- only Republicans who hate Trump. And then it just started being no Republicans at yeah, all. That's so true. the notion of CNN as a as a news channel has been laughable for a long time. Uh, it's obviously left of center. It's Democrat aligned. It's effectively DNC TV, mostly watched in airports. Um, but in terms of why their ratings are so far down, uh, they they put their audience through quite a bit of whiplash, right? They they seem like they were going to be a little more open to uh, broader ideological points of view under the the last guy, right? Who just got fired. Um, it got fired because he had a yeah, Trump licked. town hall. Trump, as we all know, is the Republican nominee, or you know, officially soon to be the Republican nominee. And that's the kind of thing that if you're a news network, you actually have to cover it. It's news. It's same thing with Trump rallies. If you're going to call yourself a news network and look at American politics. Um, but I'm, I, I don't mean to be unkind about this, although I will say some of the people at CNN were quite unkind when they thought they could get away with it um, during the Trump era because the channel was doing well. I will name names. Um, they just don't have very interesting people on television over there. Uh, it, mm. they're, I mean, I could sit here and say, I can pick people from the other side who are good TV, even if I really disagree with them. And very few of them work at CNN. Um, Yeah. You know, very few of them are interesting and have unique takes and have a real presence. So it's not surprising at all. I think CNN is getting what it deserves. um, And it's just making everybody think more about who's honest with you about what they're trying to do and who's still playing games about being nonpartisan and just objective news. It's not you know, it's terrible. They never had great ratings. That's the truth. Except on the big news days, like when there's breaking news and, you know, the the tsunami and earthquake over in Phuket, Thailand. That huge, huge. Everybody tunes into CNN because they will cover the field. They all have the best resources. They, they're they overstaffed. So those are good nights for CNN. Other than that, they've never had any ratings. But they used to have respect. You know, they, nobody ever, like, got a sizzle or a little tingle when they watched CNN. But- it used to be fair. And then they completely abandoned that under Jeff Zucker. And now they're, they've are they ruined their reputation and they have shitty ratings still. So it's the worst combination. I'll, I'll tell you a story. Somebody here, I don't know who it is, but in the new role is, is uh, she's out on maternity leave. I'm not sure who it is, but I guess until she comes back, they're going to have Wolf Blitzer sit, sit in for her. And can I tell you something? It reminds me very much. Oh, it was Pam, Pamela Brown. She's going to be at 11 a.m., but she's on maternity leave. So Wolf Blitz is going to anchor. When I was at Fox, I was in Roger Ailes' office. Jeff Zucker had just taken over as the new head of CNN. And he was calling Roger to say, thank you for saying those nice things about me in the press. I love the story. And Roger said, 
Well, I didn't say them because they're true. I said them because they make myself look good. <laughs> they make me look good. And Zucker laughed and he said, well, do you have any advice for me? And Roger said, well, I could certainly use another hour of Wolf Blitzer. <laughs> and lo wow. and behold, they're still doing this. They don't understand that was sarcasm. We do not need another hour of Wolf Blitzer. He's not the answer to your problems or anything in the morning where they've literally got one third the audience of Morning Joe and Fox and Friends. So so Trump won the election and I knew what, I, cause I had seen it coming for a long time at CNN. Uh, and, and believe it or not, cause I used to do a lot of, uh, I used to do it on your show at Fox, Megan. I appreciate that very much. And then at CNN, I mean, I knew all the counterterrorism stuff backwards and forwards because I'd worked at CIA, CTC, and I'd run presidential briefings, and I'd been in Iraq, and I'd been in Afghanistan, and and it was a couple of years before I was on TV. It wasn't 20 years ago, which is a whole other thing about how cable news works. Some of these guys that you know retired from the Air Force in 1994, I, I wouldn't go to them necessarily to have their latest strategy on how to deal with what's going on in Syria. <laughs> Neither here nor there, but that was a common thing in cable news. At the, you know, going back now about a decade. But I had no job uh, for television in 2016. CNN offered to extend my contract, which was a shock to me, uh, because I could do the terrorism stuff, though, and not politics. And I said no. And I will remember I saw I didn't think Jeff Zucker knew who I was. And I'm sure now he would say that he doesn't know who I am, which is fine. I don't care. Uh, but I remember I walked in the lobby over there after I had said no to the contract. They're just I just don't want to work for you guys anymore. I won't take any more of your money. Uh, which is, you know, in TV, especially as you're starting out, I was you know, earlier even in my career than I am now. Um, that's that's kind of a bold move. Zucker saw me in the lobby. I was going there to visit a friend because I had made a lot of friends in the staff. He looked at me and he goes, what are you doing here? Oh, wow. <laughs> Just like oh, that. nice. And I was like, I don't know. I'm going to see a friend. Like, is that OK? <laughs> I'm like banned from the building because I don't want to accept your uh, very, oh. very meager paycheck to be a punching bag and try to explain to your audience that they're a bunch of anti-Trump lunatics. I mean. You know, I, I just try to keep it real. So anyway, that was that's it, it my Jeff Zucker story. It did not end well for him either there. I mean, it's just, look, he, they, they never should have done the turn they did. They could have done slow and steady through the Trump years, tried to maintain objectivity. They didn't. Discover a holistic wellness solution with Bond Charge, a brand dedicated to optimizing every aspect of your life. Grounded in science and inspired by nature, their evidence-based products cover a broad spectrum of premium wellness items. From enhancing sleep and performance to boosting energy, accelerating recovery, and balancing hormones, Bond Charge offers a diverse range of benefits. Consider the infrared sauna blanket from Bond Charge that they say can burn extra calories and detoxify. This innovative blanket elevates your heart rate, simulating the effects of physical exercise. Bond Charge says sweating during the process helps eliminate heavy metals and toxins from your body, and that setting it up takes less than a minute. It rapidly heats up for a quick and convenient experience. For a limited time, save 15% by visiting bondcharge.com slash MK. Use the coupon code MK, that's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E.com slash MK, and use coupon code MK to save yourself 15%. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.